We should be. We're live, Amy. We are live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome into our sacred space, beautiful people. I feel so blessed to be here for another Sacred Sunday with you. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing my phone. I'm checking here on my phone to see who is tuning in live here on Facebook with us. So I'm going here to our Facebook page, Brentwood Inspired Living Center, and I was just saying I'm in the hotel this morning, so sometimes things are a little slower for me in the hotel getting, getting connected. It's not always such a high-speed internet, or maybe it is, but there's so many people trying to use it at once, so that could be uh, that could be it too. Okay, good. I found us. Here we are. So when you get here, let me know you're here with a comment because that's when I get to see your beautiful name and beautiful picture, your profile picture, whatever it may be. Sometimes it is your face and that's always lovely. Otherwise, I just see the numbers joining us and I don't necessarily know it's you and I really love to know when you are here. So let us know you can see us and hear us. That is really important to the success of our Sunday morning. If you can't see us and hear us, well, that would be a little awkward. So, <laughs> so welcome in everybody. It's the last Sunday in February. Our theme, Love Prevails, has been a very rich, a very rich theme for us this month. Welcome in everybody to our Sacred Sunday Facebook Live. You have joined us here at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. This is our Sunday gathering where we meet here every Sunday to share the peace, shower the love, nourish the soul. Brentwood Inspired Living Center is a place, a space in consciousness where we invite all people, every single person to explore their spiritual path, their life path, because we know they're one and the same, and to tune into the great truth of, of each one of our divinity and activate inner wisdom and radiate, radiate compassion into the world. And I am honored to be the spiritual director of such a unique and powerful community. My name is Amy Van Ling, and it's my joy to be here each week with you. Um, we are a space where you will discover a dynamic variety of thought leaders and remarkably gifted musicians. As you see on our screen, we're truly, truly many voices sharing inspiration and activating the frequency of love. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Nancy. I see you. Nancy says, good morning, beautiful people. You sound great. Thank you. I always like that confirmation. <clears throat> Pat says, it's a beautiful day for beautiful happenings. Yes, it is. Good morning, Peggy. I see you logging in. Let me know when you get here because I love to hear from you. Good morning, Karen. Karen says, good morning. Good morning, precious souls. I am in San Antonio, Texas this morning. I'm heading on through the belly of Texas, and it's no small task to do that. It's taking us three days <laughs> to get across this grand state. Um, it's been a fun and cold journey so far. We were going to take the northern uh, route um, heading east, but made the decision to turn south down onto Interstate 10 to avoid some of those freezing temperatures and icy roads. Uh, some of you know my 16-year-old son just got his driver's license last week <laughs> before we left, so I thought we should probably play it safe and, and go south to the warmer roads. And um, So we have a couple more days before uh, reaching the East Coast, and it's been wonderful. Uh, good morning, Lewinda. She says, good morning. Good morning, Ronnie. Good morning, Michael J. Allen. He says, welcome to a vibration of harmony for the world. Good morning. Yes, indeed. I affirm. Randy is here. Good morning, Randy. Nice to see everybody tuning in. I'm grateful for this opportunity to come together. If you're new here, please feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Jan. She's on the screen. She's our board president or any of our board members. We'd love to connect with you. All of the information about Brentwood Inspire Living Center can be found on our website, brentwoodilc.org. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, beautiful people. As always, I have my phone here and that's what I'm looking down to check out. I'm checking you out. I'm checking out your names and your faces and your comments, uh, which I love every Sunday morning to connect. Um, so let's, uh, hi, David. He says, good morning. Safe travels. Thank you. <laughs> it's fun. You know, I, I love to drive and I, I don't mind it at all. So traveling, doing a drive like this to me is really peaceful. Um, well, once in a while we get terrible traffic, but <laughs> other than that, it's great. Good morning, Kathy. Nice to see you here. So I am so thrilled to be here this morning. 
uh, with Cornelius O'Shaughnessy, Beverly B, Beverly B Music and Jan, we welcome everyone into our sacred space. Greetings, love, virtual hugs, beautiful ones. We're grateful to be together, grateful to be one, celebrating oneness. We want you to know that you are loved and valued, and we're so thankful that you're tuning in with us. Hello, John. Good morning. Glad you, that you are here with us this morning. So it is my utmost pleasure to welcome for the very first time, Cornelius O'Shaughnessy. We appreciate your yes to share your wisdom and your insight and your, your harmony and your beauty with our community. We're grateful that you are joining us. Cornelius's message today is Kali Yuga. I am so looking forward to this. And um, there is a workshop today on our Zoom link that is from 1130 to 1230. So when we conclude here, we'll hop over to that Zoom link, and that's going to be extremely rich. That will be an ex exploration of our true nature and the ancient path to enlightenment. I'm really looking forward to that one, too. It will be not only insightful, but transformational. So remember that all everybody is welcome to our workshops. We It doesn't have to be anybody that's even been with us before. So invite anybody uh, you would like, anybody who you think might be very interested in, in this topic. We welcome all people into our space. So we look forward to this. Thank you, Cornelius, for being with us. We have the soulful Beverly B back with us. She is amazing. She was just telling me about all the healings and everything that are, that's going on in her world um, through the Clubhouse app and all the people that she's touching. We're so, so grateful for you, Beverly, your heart stirring, spirit filled, downloaded music. Thank you for saying yes to us. Yes to bringing all of that beauty, healing spirit to our community. We're tremendously grateful for your presence um, and the joy and the centering that we feel when you're with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing you with us. Thank you. And we have our beloved board president and loving pillar of this community, Jan Knight. She'll be sharing our inspirational reading today, creating a space to tune into prosperity and abundance. So thank you, Jan, for tuning in with us this morning. Hello, everybody. I see you popping in with us. Uh, John says, hi, Bonnie. It says, Bonnie and Robin say peace and love. Thank you. Paris is here. Welcome in. Jennifer says, happy Sunday. Sending love to all. Good morning, Paris. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, bringing your hearts and souls to our space. John says, prayers for the Ukraine, for Ukraine, please, everyone. One of my best friends from childhood under terror is siege there. Absolutely. Holding space for Ukraine and everybody. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so what is going on? If you or anyone you know would like life affirming, love affirming prayer, this is not the prayer where we're like, oh, please, God, just this one time. You know, this is the prayer that's an affirmation of what we know, tuning into the truths, returning to wholeness, a place that already exists. And so if you have a prayer request, share those with us through our prayer and healing page on our website and our prayer and angel team um, handles those with lots of loving, tender consciousness and care. Um, so we appreciate you sending those into us. And we are also very grateful for them to be able to pray over them uh, with you and for you. So everything else you can always find on our website, brentwoodilc.org. If you would like to receive updates that sometimes happen during the week, we've had a little bit of change here and there over the last few weeks with addresses and such. The, that, all, that information always comes out on our weekly connection email on Wednesdays. And so if you'd like to receive those updates, sign up for those uh, on our website under connect, and then it's sign up for weekly connection email, and then you'll get those every Wednesday and you'll know what's going on and what's moving and shaking around here. So next Sunday, join the Brentwood Inspired Living Center community in person with Verona Garland and John Shin at our new address, which is uh, 4703 Lone Tree Way, and that's in Antioch. All that information is on the website. Um, if you are online and you're not in California, you can still catch that in-person gathering on the Facebook Live. They'll, they'll be tuning, tuning it in through the, <laughs> the Facebook Live. Okay, everybody, beautiful ones. I see you all here. We're so grateful that you're here. I keep my phone right here next to me so I can see you. We're going to open up with tuning into our mission statement. So allow yourselves to just <clears throat> release tension, drop into your heart space, 
feel that vibrational flow um, in this space of consciousness. We are an open, heart-centered, spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. Thank you, beings of light, for being here. I am going to hand the screen over to Beverly B. right now for our community song this morning. Thank you, Beverly. We appreciate and love you. Thank you so much. Now, I don't know if you if you all remember this song. We did it the last time. And I think, um, you know, we're all from different places, you know, and I, I heard you say um, oneness, right? And so... The name of this song is called One Voice, and we're from all over the world, right? One voice, one voice, one voice. So what I want you to do, since I can't see your beautiful faces, I can, you know, I can't see them, but you can type in the box, right? You can type one voice, because it's all frequency, and it's all vibration, right? So we can lift up others with just those letters right one voice one voice it's all about one voice one voice one voice so type it one voice one voice one voice it's all about one voice you know sometimes we don't need a lot of words so i was going to say the lyrics but the spirit is like no all we need is one voice, 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 one voice. It's all about one voice, one voice, one voice. Love prevails, <laughs> right? It's all about one voice, one voice, one voice. It's all about one voice, one voice, one voice, one voice, one voice, one voice, one voice. One voice. So beautiful. I love that. I love that, Beverly. But thank you for listening to Spirit, too. She said, uh, forget the lyrics. We're just going one voice. That's it. That's the lyric today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for you and, and bringing you to us, your, your authenticity. We love you. Okay, Jan, I'm going to hand the screen over to you for our inspirational reading this morning. It's all yours. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And it's great to be here. And, uh, you know, our theme has been Love Prevails for the last, uh, for the month of February. And we've, we've spoken about self-love and only love prevails and love of humanity and our own, the spirituality of love. And so today I thought that um, we would have some inspiration from the Beatles, especially John Lennon. So it's, it's appropriate since... Uh, um, Cornelius is uh, British. <laughs> anyway, I spent my high school years and college years listening to the Beatles. And to this day, I turn to their albums and uh, especially for some, some of my favorite songs, especially for the songs about life and about love. And one of the reasons that the Beatle music has made such a lasting impression on the world is because of the wisdom found in their lyrics. They created catchy, fun music, but the lyrics were inspiring and like they're like poetry for our heart and soul. And Beatles music transcends all ages, all classes, all genders, all races worldwide. They always had a way with words and they could easily convey the innermost feelings through songs. And you know the song, love, love, love. All you need is love. Love is the answer. Love is all you need. So let's step back in time now, or not, with me, close your eyes and listen to a few quotes, some of which were included in their songs from my favorite John Lennon about love. So first, 
All you need is love. Love is all you need. We live in a world where we have to hide to make love while violence is practiced in broad daylight. There are two basic motivating forces in life, fear and love. While violence, while we are, and when we are afraid, we pull back from life. If someone thinks that love and peace is a cliche that must have been left behind in the 60s, that's his problem. Love and peace are eternal. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Because I've been in love before and I found that love was more than just holding hands. We've got this gift of love, but love is like a precious plant. You can't just accept it and leave it in the cupboard or just think it's going to get on by itself. You've got to keep watering it. You've got to really look after it and nurture it. Love is a promise. Love is a souvenir. Once given, never forgotten, never let it disappear. We need to learn to love ourselves first in all our glory and our imperfections. If we cannot love ourselves, we cannot fully open to our ability to love others or our potential to create. Evolution and all hopes for the better world rest in the fearlessness and open-hearted vision of people who embrace life and love. And finally, it matters not who you love, where you love, why you love, when you love, or how you love. It matters only that you love. So it is the wisdom of John Lennon, the wisdom. Mm. Oh, that was so beautiful. Thank you. That was like a little beautiful. walk down memory mm -hmm. lane <laughs> with all the songs. Thank you, Jan. That was great. Appreciate that brought a big smile to my face. Okay, Beverly, we're going to hand the screen back to you for more of our soul stirring this morning. Thank you. So what I need for you to know is that um, this is just going to be a download as always. I laugh because I never know how it's going to end. <laughs> All right. 
I love that. I love that about you, Beverly, how you listen to your guidance. And uh, we appreciate the download because it's for us. We yes. get to receive it. Thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. much. Mm. You're welcome. Okay, Jan. I'm going to hand the screen over to you for our blessing of abundance. Thank you so much, Beverly. That was, that was beautiful. This is so, uh, I don't know, just, so just made my heart glow. This is and I, I feel it too. That's yeah, why I left. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. So now is our time to come together. And I invite you to join me right now in um, our prayer of plentitude as we welcome and accept the glorious abundance today and every day of our lives. So take a deep breath and breathe in love, breathe in light, hold it gently, and now release it slowly as you connect through your heart with our message of prosperity. We come together today opening our hearts and minds to the one spirit, the light, infinite wisdom, infinite mind, knowing that there is only one power and one presence and one life, and that is the life of spirit. We affirm that we are one with spirit and that there is no one, there is nothing that separates us from this oneness. We know that we are one with infinite mind that has created all that is. We know that the divine qualities of peace and power and plenty and wisdom already are in within each one of us. And we embrace those qualities now. And we step forward into this new year with love and anticipation, standing in the truth of who and what we are and saying yes to our prosperity, saying yes to our harmony, saying yes to health and order and love and peace and our amazing expansion in every form. And with the greatest gratitude, we accept this transformation that's happening in the world, it's happening in our lives, in our consciousness for ourselves and for our community and for the world. We know that it is done, we give thanks. We give great thanks and we release it now. We let it go, we let spirit do its perfect work through us. And we trust that we're provided for, and it is done. And so it is. We know this truth. Absolutely. 100%. So it is. So now we just have a few very short, but really important and really important, important um, announcements, which I'm going to reiterate. Amy's already mentioned but the first one is that we have a new location. So next week we're in person. It's the first Sunday of a new month and we're in person March 6th. And we will be at the Antioch Community Center which is a new location for us right across from the high school on Lone Tree. Just go straight up to the front door, go left, the park in the parking lot, you'll find signs. You can see our signs, they'll direct you to our room in the center. And um, I really hope we'll see a whole bunch of you there, all of you come and be a part of our, our Sunday service. It's been a long time. And uh, then on March 20th, this is something I, I really want you to mark on your calendar. You're going to need to take action as soon as possible. March 20th on Facebook Live, Robert Leon will be back from England and he is his, he's doing the uh, presentation is also doing a really, really amazing first time ever workshop on Zoom. And it's not really a workshop, it's a ceremony. It's a cacao tea ceremony. It's gonna bring us to an amazing state of meditation and um, clarity and peace and harmony. And uh, you'll need to sign up for this and you'll need to, um, you'll need to uh, let Amy know or you let myself know that you're coming. And there's a $25 uh, uh, fee that will cover the expenses of the, of the ceremony. And anyway, I just wanted to let you know about that. And look at the website for details and, and it'll be coming to you in the mail as well. So that's 
a wonderful experience never happened before. So we're excited about that. And then don't forget that the Saturday before that is our 360 live band. And so they'll be live at, um, at this, the Lone Tree address as well. And be sure you check our website for everything and our Facebook page and da 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 da. Okay, that's it. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> no, that's perfect and wonderful. And the reason why you have to take action with the cacao ceremony is because you will need to collect your tea oh, from, from Jan. So, uh, so that's why we would like for you to sign up ahead of time so that we can get all the tea divvied out and in your pretty little bags and, and get them to you. So thank you, Jan, for all those reminders and that blessing of abundance. We appreciate you very, very much. Okay, we're ready for the next download, Beverly B. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? What I just got is, you know, we're talking about this, this love, right? And yeah. um, and 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 that we, with all this stuff going on in the world, this download that I'm just getting is like, you guys need to start moving around a little bit. <laughs> mm, yes, get the movement going. All right, we're with you. Way back and forth, you know, just let it go. Come on. Just swing back and forth. Don't worry if anybody's looking. I can't see you. <laughs> Come on. Because what I what I just heard was um, that love love is supposed to be fun. Come on, keep moving back and forward. Loosen up. I love it. Yes. Movement gets the energy in motion, right? right? It it's does. It's a blood flowing and yay. That was beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Beverly B. If you want more of the Beverly B experience, you can find her on Instagram, Beverly B Music and Clubhouse and anywhere else, Beverly? Um, and just my website, beverlybmusic.com. It's all Beverly B Music. So. Beverly B Music. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Thank you both, Jan and Beverly, for activating this space with enormous spirit and beauty and serenity. And we're just so grateful for your smile, smiles, your presence, your peaceful essence. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, activating our space. We love you. I'll see you over on this side, Jan. <laughs> thank you, Jan. Thank you, that, Beverly. We'll be, thank we'll you. be in thank touch. Thank you for that message. Thank I will. Thank you for that message. God bless. Love you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Okay, wonderful people. I am so thrilled to introduce you to Cornelius O'Shaughnessy, who shares his heart so beautifully with the world. Um, oh, just such a beautiful essence you are. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes to us and, and bringing yourself here to us. Uh, he's outside of London, so he's hours ahead. But today we decided we were all going to just be on Pacific time because I was getting confused with my time. And so anyway, here we are. So grateful. Remember that after Cornelius's talk, we'll go on to Zoom at 11.30 for the workshop, which is going to be excellent. So let me read you a little bit about Cornelius so you can get to know him a little better. Cornelius has studied meditation and Eastern philosophy for over 26 years and has deep insight into life and the mind. What he teaches is regarded as the most direct path to enlightenment. It is an ancient, intense, and immersive method of self-realization that uses wisdom and insight to change the way people see themselves, others, and the world around them. The knowledge and experience Cornelius has gained over the years has given him a deep insight into the human condition and a unique ability to help others find enlightenment and peace of mind. Cornelius teaches and advises people from all walks of life on how to see life clearly and meet it with wisdom and compassion. Yes, I affirm this. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to pray us in, and um, then I'm going to hand the screen over to Cornelius this morning. So I invite you to join me in the space of opening up and just making yourself available. Loosen any parts of your body that are tense after that movement, probably nothing tense, but relax your forehead, your jaw, wherever. Just feel into this moment. We give thanks. We give thanks and appreciation today that we are here, that we are alive, that we have breath, that we have one another. We invite in the spirit of holiness. We have great awareness of the oneness of life and that we are unified with the presence of peace, of love, of wellness. We invite blessings. We're receptive. We are a conduit for the magnificence to express. We declare that we are available. We are available for love. We share our love and blessing over Cornelius as we open our hearts and our minds to receive the inspiration, the insight, the awareness, the wisdom through the vehicle of his spirit and his message today. I release this word into the great expanse of love for the benefit of all. And so it is. Ashe. Thank you, Cornelius. I'm going to hand the screen over to you for our message this morning. We appreciate you. Hello, everyone. How are you? First of all, thank you for that amazing intro. <laughs> That's the best uh, kind of uh, beginning to a talk I've ever had. It's if I could have everyone taking everyone into that space before I speak, you know. Uh, half of the talk is usually generating the right kind of state of mind in people. So thank you all so much for the beautiful words and music and all of it. So yeah, my name's Cornelius. Uh, yes, this uh, teaching is a, what they call a direct path to enlightenment, which means that it's not gradual. So it's uh, usually when we learn about enlightenment and meditation and we start doing mantras and it's a slow, gradual kind of meander up to uh, enlightenment. But with this method, uh, it's sudden, it's quick. It's intense. And the reason why I kind of explain that before I talk is because it's, it's taught differently. It can be, like, like I said, more intense. It's more direct. It's designed to trigger emotions. It's designed to rapidly get us to evolve, to change the way we think, to change the way we feel. Uh, a little bit about how I arrived at this, because this is very, uh, you'll see how it fits with, with Kali Yoga. How I arrived at this is I was 15 years old and I had, uh, treatment resistant depression so I would uh, I tried all sorts of different uh, medications and therapies and nothing worked the doctor explained to me that I might as well be living in the medieval times because nothing nothing they were doing was helping so I had this in uh, this ongoing depression at such a young age that I didn't quite know how to deal with and it started to develop more and more and more and around the age of 18 it started to become quite pronounced it turned into a, a you know because of all sorts of different things that were happening in my life it turned into this kind of full-on breakdown. So I had a nervous breakdown. And at the same time, I then became very sick with nerves in my back and my spine, Lyme disease, neurobiliosis from Lyme disease. I had all these physical issues uh, so, uh, and I was getting tested for MS. I thought I was, you know, the, the nerves were stopping in parts of my subscapularis muscles. 
I was a real mess. Um, and I went to India in this state. Uh, nothing would have taken me to India other than my friend had rung me up. She said, you need to come here. You need to come here. She goes, you can't be at home. It's too dark. It's too cold. You need to be here in the sunshine by the, you know, by the beach you lived in Goa. Come to my house and you can stay here as long as you want and just recuperate and, and, and feel well and get you know, herbal medicine and acupuncture. So I was like, wow, I can just stay there as long as I want and have this wonderful healing experience or just at least try and reconnect and, 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 and find some peace within myself. So I went to India and I got to India. I got off the plane. I got on the train to Goa. I dragged myself to her house because I was you know, having palpitations and my nerves were sore and I was having anxiety attacks and all sorts of stuff. It's not the best state to be traveling in. <laughs> but I'd spent a long time like this. You know, now we're up to age 27. So I'd had 10 years of suicidal, untreatable depression. Uh, I was in a real state, a real, real state. So I went to uh, this friend, her name is Fiona's house. And as soon as I got to the house, I heard screaming and shouting. And I was like, what's going on in here? So I, I got into the house. Uh, she was effing and blinding and he was effing and blinding and everything was going on. And I was there for around an hour. It was quite uncomfortable. And she said to me, Cornelius, I'm so, so sorry. I, I know I said all that stuff to you, but you can't stay here anymore. She goes, oh, we, we, we're splitting up. Everything's over. So you'd have to go home or move on. So I was in this unusual situation where I thought I was physically dying. What do I do, you know? What do I do? Do I go home to the hopeless? Or do I head forward into this kind of dangerous unknown where I'm in a country where I, you know, I, 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 I don't know if I have the kind of right medical care if I need it. So I decided to just get on a train and I got on a train to a place called Hampi. Hampi is an interesting place. It's like how you imagine India to be this kind of old mysterious place with all these temples. It's a special, it's a special place. And as I was sitting there, this woman came in and I looked at her, this place in Hampi, this restaurant I was sitting in, this woman walked into the restaurant and she was a girl that I'd previously seen in Thailand. Uh, I'd known her 15 years ago. And she said, Cornelius, what, what are you doing here? And in behind her comes a man who looks the exact spitting image, sounds and moves like my ex-boyfriend, who was really one of the triggers for my whole breakdown. He looked so like him, it took me 10 minutes of sitting in front of him to work out it wasn't him. Bearing in mind I'd gone out with this person for five years. We had this turbulent relationship. So I'm sitting there in this restaurant and I get this just feeling of just serendipity and kind of weirdness. It was like everything became very vivid. And she said, there's this amazing place called Aranachala, you have to come. She said, everyone's glowing with light when they leave there. And I said, ah, oh, you know, I've, I've had enough of the spiritual path. I'm wrecked now, you know. God, <laughs> if there is, you know, any, uh, any peace for me, it's, it's, it's death. You know, I don't, I, that's, what, that's how I feel. That's how I, that's how I felt. And she said, no, you, you, you come with us, come with us, come with us. So yeah, this is over three or four days of talking and we're exploring this and I end up going there. And when I end up going there, I bump into this teacher and he looks at me and he says, what, why are you here, Cornelius? I said, I'm here because of my back and because of all this stuff going on in my life and I just want peace. And he said, peace is a really noble thing to move towards. He said, this is good, this is good. He said, stand up. And so I stood up and this is in front of a room full of people. He said, look at this, this, this boy here. I was 27 at the time. He said, this boy here, he said, this is the greediest little bastard you will ever meet. And I was so shocked. <laughs> this is the kind of teacher that, that was, studies my teaching. He's like, the, you're the greediest little bastard uh, that, that these people have ever seen. He said, some people want five minutes of pleasure or one minute of bliss, but not Cornelius. He wants an eternity. He wants an eternity. He wants to be free from all his suffering. Ah, the greed, the greed, the greed. And then he came to me and he said, Cornelius, the image you've built up inside your head is what suffers not you. And he took me on this long introduction to the nature of my own mind, which we'll go into in the workshop. But I want to tell you this story because it shows how 
the crucible of change is often disaster. And I'm sure all of you have that kind of same experience, don't you, where you kind of headed into this kind of, where everything feels like, you know, I can't cope a minute longer. And yet from that, the, 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 the pushing and the, 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 the tension and the, some beauty comes from that. We grow, we become wiser, we learn, we become more empathetic, we become more compassionate. So moments of disaster are really important. It's very good to, 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 to point that out before we start to talk about Kali Yoga, Kali Yoga. So the Yogas come from the old Vedic tradition, the, the time cycles of earth. And they start with Satya, which is the time of truth. This was at the time when the earth and everyone on it was, you, know, you read all the, the scriptures and everyone's kind of enlightened and floating around and <laughs> there's miracles happening. And this is what we call the Satya Yoga. Then we move into Tritya, which is there's a slight reduction in, in, in the, the enlightened flow that within human beings. Then we move into Dwapa, which is this state where things start to crumble. We start to see corruption. We start to see all sorts of problems begin to develop. And then we enter into the Kali Yoga. And the Kali Yoga is where we find ourselves now. So the Kali Yoga is this age in which this destruction, this disaster happens all around us, you know. This whole process of life begins to seem like everything becomes corrupted, everything becomes uh, darker, everything falls apart, everything becomes difficult, you know. I'll read you a little bit about what they said about this, uh, uh, this uh, yoga that we find ourselves in. So this is from a very old text, one of the... Uh, uh, oldest of uh, the, 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 the Vedic traditions. And it says in the time of Kali Yoga, truthfulness, cleanliness, tolerance, mercy, the duration of life, physical strength and memory begin to diminish and diminish under the powerful force of this yoga. What it means is, is that all of the energies that are around begin uh, to, 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 to become more dense and everything in life becomes far more challenging. Uh, and they go through all sorts of signs things that back then, when they're talk, describing these, they say they're shocking. These could never happen. This would never ever happen in a million years. And to us, they might seem completely superficial things. They say here, men and women will live together just because of attraction, just because they're attracted to each other. Success in business will depend on deceit. Cheating people will become normal. Surely this couldn't be like this. Yes, yes, it will happen. Womanliness and manliness will be judged by whether we're attractive and whether we're, whether, whether we're a good person will fall increasingly into the background. A, people's, a person's spiritual position will be ascertained merely by external symbols. We will see people within institutions and spiritual orders that don't measure up to who they really are. A person's propriety will be seriously questioned their worth will be seriously questioned if they don't earn enough money. Everyone who juggles words will be considered clever. It's a time of hypocrisy. It's a time of deceit. It's a time where our governments become distorted. Our ways of working and our ways of being become more difficult. So this sounds like bad news, right? <laughs> it sounds like bad news. We're in this difficult time. We're in this profoundly difficult time. But actually, within this crucible of change, just like myself, within this disaster that we're finding ourselves in, economically, climate, COVID, all of these different things, that this becomes a crucible of change for the earth. And after going through this process, the mud, this is the mud of the experience, the lotus of satya begins to arise. The new age is born. Now, there's lots of different ideas about when that is and what the date is. But if you really look at the descriptions, it's starting to become obvious that we're in the depths, the very depths of this age. And it's also starting to become obvious that as the darkness gets darker, that those of us that are immersed in light or interested in light or walking with light, become brighter and brighter and brighter. So it's a real time of hope, a real time of also spiritual transformation. There is no greater age 
to focus on spiritual development. A small amount of focus on your spiritual development can catapult you to great enlightenment. Whereas in the easier ages, everything's easy. So we don't get the mud, we don't get the growth, we don't get the fertilizer that, that brings this spontaneous growth for us. But it is difficult and it's requiring all of you to step up. You know, as the, the things get dark around us, as we lose faith in our institutions, as our governments and you know, the people that are supposed to be taking care of us are seen as more and more inadequate each day that goes by. How do we deal with this? You have to enter into the arc of your being, your teachings, your community here. This is really, really important. Take your mind and take your heart and, and put it in goodness around good people. Don't trust. No anything other than that. The more aligned we are with ourselves and the more aligned we are with everyone around us, then the more this time can be of great growth. So when we understand these teachings about the Kali Yoga, we don't become pessimistic. We see the opportunity. We also see with clarity, we start to look around us and we can see, you can start to see, you know, you can start to see that we're no longer allowed to speak when we want to speak. In America, you're censored. In the UK, we're censored. What is happening to freedom? I read an article in, I think it was the New York Times or some other, and they were talking about people's obsession with personal freedom. Yeah, yeah, I am obsessed with personal freedom. It's the whole point of spirituality, of enlightenment and growth. So you can see the prosperity that, that come from our openness, our, our culture, our communication, our, you can say what you want and be what you want and think what you want, but this is in danger. And this is all Kali Yoga, you know? And you've got to be very careful because everything here is like Alice in Wonderland, back to front and upside down. And I promise you that Joe Biden's not going to help you or Trump's not going to help you. Or any of those people, are, they're not going to help you. They don't provide solutions. They just deepen your problem. And we live in this time now where we have had great suffering over two years with COVID. But it would have been less suffering if they had left us alone. If they had left us alone. But they didn't. They picked and they prodded and they shut down and they masked and they made us. They didn't ask us. They didn't say to us, this is your freedom and your personal responsibility. These are the facts. Live your lives. They overlaid a system of control onto us. In the UK, they got caught out doing it. They call it nudging, psychological manipulation. The person that founded the group came out and said, I'm sorry, this is totalitarian. Because what we need in times of pandemic is honesty and openness. We need to be able to make the right choices for ourselves, not be told what we should do for others, then only to find out that what we've been told to do for others doesn't protect them anyway. Like we're seeing in the UK with our COVID data, the people that are vaccinated are catching and spreading it more. We're seeing more and more side effects every day. In Germany, the health insurance people They've come forward and said they have an astronomical amount within their 10 million members of adverse effects. This is the biggest health insurance provider in Germany. They're not going to lie because money's involved. And this is where it's got this deceit, this lie, these lies, this control, this lack of honesty within our leaders. They have failed. They are failed. They are not holy people. They're not enlightened people. Do they come from a place of love? Are they giving you love? Are they selling you love or are they selling you fear? Are they selling you love and freedom or are they selling you fear and control? I'm aware some of these messages are hard to listen to. I'm aware you've been told not to listen to 
people that say these things. But the truth is the truth. And this path of mine, this path of ruthless and direct compassion means that I have to share with you the challenges of this yoga. And I have to warn you to let go of all these people that you are trying to depend on. Enter into the arc of your being, into the arc of your teachings, into your spiritual community. Come together, open in dialogue, transcending politics, transcending all your views about masks and no masks and this and that and mandates and passports and all of this and come together back into the heart, you know? Because these energies, these, this deceit, this, these lies, all of this, it, this is Kali Yoga. We think that there's all these people out there doing this, but it is the age, it's the universe displaying itself in this beautiful display of light and dark. This unmanifest nature, this universe that come out of nothingness is now exploring itself. And within the darkness, we begin to see more and more of the light. This is the message of the Kali Yoga. Within the darkness, we begin to see the light. The light begins to define itself. The light begins to become more and more known. But it requires now for you all to begin to release the old age. You release the old age, you release the leaders of the old age, the politics of the old age, everything of the old age. And you enter into satya, which is truth. There's a, one final part of the Kali Yoga teaching. And that's that one day, Vishnu, God, will come and bless this earth with his lotus feet once again. It doesn't matter what name you give God or anything, nature, universe, doesn't matter. The universe comes, light comes, goodness comes. And how does that come about? What does the Kali Yoga say? The Kali Yoga says that in the time of darkness, in the time of great darkness, there'll be people meeting together. There'll be people speaking together that speak truth, that speak love, that speak compassion, that in the destruction and in the fear and in the control, that flames of truth and love, and beauty will arise. Who does that sound like? Hmm? you. They're all going mad around you, aren't they? Blaming and shaming and warring and shutting people out and blaming and you're this and you're that. They've lost it. Because they don't have the anchor that you have. They don't have this. They don't have this love. So what I'm really saying is for you to trust yourself, to trust your community, to trust your heart and to measure everything that comes. So the most important thing we come across in the Kali Yoga, measure everything that comes. Is it from love or is it from fear? Is it building me up or is it knocking me down? Do I feel better or do I feel worse? You know? So. Hopefully this gives you a little insight into the, the Kali Yoga and uh, I'll hand over to Amy now. If there's any questions coming, then let me know. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> wow. Um, just feeling into all of that and, um, and knowing the peace and love that comes from your heart and sharing. And I, I love, I really appreciate the way that you, you worded some of this, you know, and, and how out of destruction and fear and control, what, what the world of appearances basically shows us out of, of, out of that can be birthed love and beauty and 
and oneness. And we talk about that a lot in our community about the old paradigm sort of versus the new paradigm and what is the old paradigm. And I've often referred to it as the sort of the divide and conquer and moving into this new, I mean, I, I haven't really delved into the, the yoga as I'm going to now, <laughs> <laughs> um, because this just makes so much sense to me. And um, it, it really aligns with sort of what we've talked about here, a lot of the new paradigm and moving into this new paradigm of oneness and responsiveness versus reactivity and, um, and really just coming from a presence of peace. I jotted down several things that you were, you were sharing with us. So everybody online, if you have any questions or comments for Cornelius, drop those into the feed right now and we'll get to those um, in a few minutes. Um, I, 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 you know, entering into or having a, having an idea about, um, the, this, what's going on right now, I believe can give people some clarity, some clarity about why things sort of look the way they do. And I, I've, I've said this in different ways too, you know, it's sort of like all this has been brought to the surface, you know, it just started years ago and then COVID, you know, sort of amplified it and accelerated it as well. Mm. So brought all this to the surface for us to see, to, to get to choose, right? How did you say it? We get to choose um, to be that love vibration, transcend the politics, transcend the things that are showing up and come together back into the heart. And isn't that mm. what it's You're about? you'll start to see more and more that there'll be people that choose fear and people that choose love and it'll become more and more pronounced. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll start to, you'll, as you'll start to use like, like a polarity splitting, this is what happens at the end of a yoga, the polarity split. And interestingly as well, it's not just kind of like we're looking and seeing, you know, signs, uh, you know, on a, on, a, on a kind of subtle level or seeing certain things that are happening that align up with texts. What we're also noticing is that the Earth's magnetic field is reducing, 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 which is leaving us more open to the effect of solar radiation and things like that, which is, some people talk about just satellites, but actually sunlight, light is what, is what causes evolution to happen, is what causes growth to happen, what causes change to happen. And all of a sudden the kind of defenses of Earth are coming down and there's more light literally, quite literally coming to Earth. It literally comes to Earth. The solar, the, 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 there, are, there are times when the solar energy comes in and goes through the salts and the minerals of the earth. And you can, you, the whole earth is buzzing with light. So we're having more of this actually happen. This is, this is science. This isn't, this isn't any kind of belief uh, that I'm, I'm speaking about here. So we're starting to see all of this. But yeah, you'll see more and more as this happens, as, as Kali Yoga comes forward, that, uh, or really recedes, because it's actually ending. Uh, we'll start to see the very worst parts of it come out and, and, and you'll start to see, you know, like, have you ever seen the film Dorian Gray where you start to see the reality of people? You know, Dorian Gray, he's like a beautiful story about like, this beautiful man who's had, you know, he has this, makes this deal with the, with the devil or where he can remain beautiful no matter, and, and free and of any sickness uh, no matter what he does. So he goes out and he does all this sin and he still looks beautiful, all right? And then all of a sudden, it, it, the painting, someone destroys the painting and or this is painting that has all of the, the sin that's contained in it. And it, all of a sudden all this sin comes to him and you see him with boils and warts. And this is what the Kali Yoga is like. You begin to see people for what they are. You're probably all noticing that you're shifting friends and moving places and everything's really shifting. And so it's, it's by becoming aware of this, it's really important it's important to become aware of this so that we can start to consciously move forward in a direction where we are flowing with love and where we really are aware of those messages of fear and control and uh, all the subtle you know because we are living in a world where through the uh, internet people are trying to literally psychologically control you Cambridge Analytica and all this kind of stuff so having an awareness of this is really important and, and going into the arc of your being so coming back to the reality of the truth as you see it it's the spirit the heart compassion wisdom yeah, that's beautiful the way you said that come back to the arc of your being isn't that mm, that's just so sweet you did you you said see with clarity and and this is when we when we um pray or go in meditation and ask for the eyes to see and the ears to hear this is what we're talking about right beyond appearances beyond the surface like what is really and I uh, mean, for me personally, it's always going to the arc of my being because that's where the inner, that's where my guidance is. That's where my wisdom is. You know, I'm not listening outside of myself for what to do or what is truth. I'm going within because that is my, that's my direct connection 
you know, to, to the truth. Um, let me check in with everybody and see how everybody's doing. Do we have any questions? Is everybody just contemplating what's going on? <laughs> Not a whole lot of questions coming in or, or my feed is just slow, which is a possibility as well. It's quite, um, an, it's quite an intense, uh, an, an intense, an intense teaching. It, it, it brings up a lot of stuff. Also, like I said, this way of teaching is to be direct. And that's another thing we talk about, you know, Beverly was like, you know, talking about, you know, more lively kind of kind of compassion and love. There's, there's also this, 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 this uh, ferocious love where we really begin to face what's happening in our lives, where we see what's happening and where we speak our truth. You know, and sometimes that truth is very difficult to see. And I think we're all in that situation at the moment. Most people have what they call cognitive dissonance, which means you just shut down. There's so much happening, you just kind of shut down and don't see it. But as brave souls that, that trust and have faith in, 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 in God and in life and in the universe, we, we don't have that. We just open ourselves up, you know? Or, we, or when we have that, we overcome that and we move through that, you know? Um, so this is it's really important that we develop a set that the more we can trust and have faith in life and God, the more that the, 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 the blinkers can come off and the more we can see all of this stuff and say, actually, I, I, I can see all of this. It is horrible. It is awful. The politics and whatever's going on in public health, who knows, and all of this, it is an absolute disaster, but I, I, I'm not dependent on that. I don't draw my well-being from Tony Fauci or whoever else. Like, I, it's from God. And I speak from right. God and I live from God and I love from God. And, and, and this is the flow of our, of our life, you know? Yeah, thank you for saying that. It takes bravery to, to face cognitive dissonance head on. You know, it takes courage to address programs and conditions that we may have live, been living with our, our entire lives, you know? I mean, it's, it's really a huge fundamental shift and it, it does, it takes bravery and courage to, to say, to stay in curiosity and say, hmm, what do I really think about this? Is this really true for me? And, and we're so bombarded. And I think with, with social media and all of the, the outside influences coming into our space and our mind and our soul all the time, it's, it really takes conscious choice to step back from that and really go to the arc of our being. And I think I'm going to steal that <laughs> from you <laughs> and, and um, come to that truth, that inner wisdom lining, aligning with the divine. That's, that's where it is. So um, thank you for, for sharing and saying all that you're saying. Okay, everybody, this is what I think. I think it's a little after 11. So we are going to take a breather, get a snack, hydrate and get ready for the workshop, which is shifting gears. It's a different topic, but it's going to be enlightening and expansive. And I'm really, really looking forward to this. Cornelius, how can everybody find you if they want to tune in to you more, what you share, what you teach? Uh, so I, you can find me at uh, Bodhimaya, B-O-D-H-I-M-A-Y-A, -A, uh, bodhimaya.com. Uh, I, I just do retreats and stuff like that. I'm changing what I'm doing at the moment. So uh, do follow that and see what happens. And then uh, Cornelius non-duality is I'm saying everything that I'm not allowed to say. So go there if you want, but uh, it's, it's, it's uh, me communicating about what's happening in Kali Yoga, what's happening in the world, really to try and get people to realize to let go of it. So I'm using a lot of, uh, and I have a background uh, kind of, I'm not a, a, a scientist or a doctor, but I have a, I used to do, or I still do lots of functional medicine based retreats. And so I have a community of nutritionists and doctors and I can get all sorts of information and this is how I started seeing that things weren't what they were saying and what was really happening were just two completely different things so on that profile you can you can see a display of what's wrong <laughs> with the world or if you want something a bit lighter go for body Maya. <laughs> <laughs> that's on Instagram and I know uh, I spent a lot uh, a lot of time on Instagram I was sort of banned from Facebook and I didn't want to lose my Facebook profile because I go live every <laughs> every week so I sort of backed off Facebook for for safety reasons but um I'm yeah I was shadow banned on Instagram now and so what what that means is that when we speak some of these truths we get censored. And um, so some, some of us are knowing that firsthand what that feels like and looks like. And so it's important to keep speaking and loving, speaking and loving and returning to the arc of your being, because uh, that's what this is all about. So thank you for explaining this, this to us from this perspective of the Vedas and um, beautiful, beautiful to know uh, sort of have a sort of a, I guess, 
our minds, humans sort of like a structure, like a structure of what's going on. We're in this fourth cycle. And <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, it can be helpful. You know what I do? I'm going to check back one more time and just make sure um, I'm not missing anything on the feed just in case um, there's something here. If there's something here and it's not loading, which is possible, um, we'll get to it in the workshop. If I see something after the fact, we'll, we'll definitely tune in and get to that. So, okay, everybody join us on the workshop link. I'm going to drop it here. It's also on our homepage, brentwoodilc.org. It's going to be from 1130 to 1230. And we look forward to connecting there. If you feel inspired, revitalized by and grateful for Brentwood Inspired Living Center community, please consider visiting our giving page on our website, brentwoodilc.org. We create in our life the energetic exchanges. Uh, We create our life by the energetic exchanges that we make. And so I invite you to tune in and feel if this community aligns with your values, speaks to your heart, um, consider participating in our our co-creation here and and making an energetic exchange with us through our website. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share our prayer of divine awakening on the screen. I'm going to share my screen so everybody at home can feel into this, tune into this prayer of divine awakening and make this, this, your, your mantra, your affirmation for your life, the prayer of divine awakening. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes an open heart and expansive mind. I tr- choose my vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously harmonizing with life's events. I am receptive to source energy, divine guidance and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely. I move forward in a state of appreciation and extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free, claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is. Blessings, beloveds. I love you. I appreciate you. Remember, we'll be live next week for the in-person and then I'll be back and we're just rolling around here with, with newness and goodness. So thank you for joining with us and tuning in and tuning within. Thank you, Cornelius. We will see you on the workshop in just about 20 minutes. Love and blessings, everybody. Shine on bright ones.